In this class we want to talk about legitimacy theory. Now legitimacy theory is defined as a generalized perception or assumption that the actions of an entity are desirable, proper or appropriate with some socially constructed system of norms, values, beliefs and definitions. Now, that's a that's a very good definition. It's, it's a very embracive definition. It covers many aspects. But the essential feature of the definition is that it links the actions of an entity, the actions of a business, let's say, and it looks at those actions, it links those with what is deemed appropriate or, or, or permissible within the society. So it looks at the actions and deems them as desirable or proper or right according to some set of standards within the society. So in other words when we take an action, uh, let's say a business action, it's deemed as good or bad according to the standards of the society. So within society we have norms, we have definitions or understandings of what is good behaviour or bad behaviour. And when a company takes an action it can be judged as good or bad according to that standard, the standard that's held within the society. So if a company takes an action and it's deemed to be good according to the standards of society, then that's how the organisation is judged, judged as a good organisation. In other words, the legitimacy of the organisation is judged according to the standards of the society. Similar to social contract theory, legitimacy theory is based upon the notion that there is a social contract between the society and an organisation, between the society and the business. There is a, a social contract, there is a, a mutuality, both sides stand to, to benefit. On the one side, on the one hand, the organisation will gain profits and uh, will promote its interests. On the other side, it will manufacture or produce products or services that satisfy customer needs. It will supply employment and promote prosperity within the area. So there is a two sides here, and both sides stand to benefit. There is a, a social contract between the society and the organisation. A firm receives permission to operate from the society and is ultimately accountable to the society for how it operates and what it does because society provides corporations the authority to own and use natural resources and to hire employees. So companies receive permission to operate within the society they have to be uh, they have to be approved in a sense by the society society must want the organizations and because the society um, grants permission to the organizations to exist the organizations have some sort of accountability to the society for how it operates and what it does clearly there are costs and benefits here. The society benefits because, as I said earlier, uh, it creates employment and prosperity and it produces products that benefit uh, customers and satisfies customers' demands and the organisation benefits. But the organisation may also produce some undesirable side effects which some economists call externalities. Externalities are non-traded interdependence. They are in this case perhaps negative externalities. They are pollution. We don't like pollution so it's a negative externality. It's outside of the market. We, we can't trade it. Uh, trade pollution. So what we do instead is force the organization to act responsibly. So the society puts pressure on the organizations to behave responsibly. The, the, the society, I should say, may enact laws that prevent organizations from 
polluting or causing a nuisance within the society. So there are costs and benefits but essentially what it comes down to is the fact that the society allows the organizations to exist and if the society allows the organizations to exist then the organizations are legitimate they have permission traditional profit maximization was viewed as a measure of corporate performance that's how early economics textbooks judged economic performance uh, if companies were profit maximizers they were seen as efficient if they were not profit maximizers they were somehow inefficient uh, I think the theory of the firm uh, which was the section of economics that dealt with this has moved a long way since then and now is involved in many more concepts and ideas about what's meant by efficiency and and how companies um, exist and, and what their motivations are but early days profit maximization was seen as a very important model and one in which uh, could measure corporate performance but according to legitimacy theory profit is viewed as an all-inclusive measure of organizational legitimacy so profits are, are seen within this view as something which is necessary but at the same time the profits uh, should be uh, should ensure that the, the goodwill of the community is is maintained and that the legitimacy of the business as a participant in the society should be maintained The emphasis of legitimacy theory is that an organization must consider the rights of the public at large, not merely the rights of the investors. So for, for firms to exist, for companies to exist in the community, in, in, in the society, the companies must recognize that they're there by virtue of the approval of that society. They get their legitimacy from the society and therefore they have an obligation to the society as well failure to comply with societal expectations may result in sanctions being imposed in the form of restrictions on the firm's operations resources and demand for its products so if, if the company is not respecting the society it, it almost ceases to be legitimate it ceases to have the respect of the community then it may become uh, the the focus of discontent the the society may turn against it and uh, require that uh, local government or national government imposes laws and restrictions on this type of activity the activity of the business so the society may turn against the business it no longer is legitimate it's not acting in the interest of the wider society the the, the customers may simply simply uh, I should say uh, stop buying the product the the customers may turn against the product because the the company is seen as acting in bad ways it's lost its legitimacy There's a lot of empirical research uh, has used legitimacy, legitimacy theory uh, to study social and environmental reporting and proposes a relationship between corporate disclosures and community expectations. Well, for legitimacy, it, it, the company must be approved by the society. The society must recognize the importance of the organization the importance of the company and approve of it but this may overlap with corporate governance may overlap with uh, uh, the expectations of the society and the company should have disclosures about uh, issues that affect the community it should allay the fears of the community or the worries of the community or any issues the community has got 
Because if it doesn't, it will lose its legitimacy. It will lose its right to be within that community. So organisations must have standards that accord with the the basis, the norms and the values of the society. They must accord with those. If there's a variance between what the organisation wants or does compared to what the, ex uh, the society expects, then the organisation will lose legitimacy and will have problems within that society. So legitimacy theory is fundamental. It's This is the contract between the wider society and the existence of the business. And for that contract to exist, the business must reflect, as I said, the norms, the values, the expectations of the society. If it doesn't, it'll be at variance with what the society expects and the society will turn against it. So that's what we mean by legitimacy theory. It's the, in a sense, the right of the organisation to exist within the community. And that's all we're going to deal with in this short video. So let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.